In today's video, we're going to look at how to integrate a flexible file upload service into your application that saves files straight into an AWS S3 bucket or Azure Blob Storage container, and how to drag and drop files using a Blazor WebAssembly client. Uploading files is a common requirement when building web applications, and there are lots of ways to do it. Years ago, it was common to blob files straight into a database table column, and we can see this even with sample databases like the Northwind sample database. This is generally not an ideal way to store files since database storage is much more expensive than a host of other options. With easy access to cloud provider solutions, it makes a lot more sense to use offerings like AWS S3 or Azure Blob Storage since they can be extremely cost effective for most system requirements, not to mention fast and reliable. For these reasons, ServiceStack has the File Upload Feature plugin to make this functionality easier to get going and integrate with other high level features like low code and auto query. Just like other auto query functionality, the file upload feature plugin provides the service implementation for you so you can focus on the data modeling and business requirements of your application. We've made a sample application called File Blazor that uses the file upload feature plugin with both low code and a custom Blazor WebAssembly front end. This enables us to quickly build an MVP with low code and reuse those same backend services with a custom Blazor UI for the best user experience. File Blazor also shows how different cloud providers can be integrated by having three different file storage options configured in the same sample application. We have a live demo of File Blazor hosted at file.locode.dev if you want to have a look at a running example, and the full source is available on GitHub with a link in the description. But to better show how this plugin can be used, we're going to walk through building a new application where we have requirements to build a custom file storage solution and extend it based on changing requirements along the way. We're going to utilize ServiceStack Auto Query and the built-in low-code app so we can have a working MVP at every stage of development while still being able to build on top of our early efforts as more changes are required. Before we get started, we need a couple of things installed. The .NET 6 SDK and the ServiceStack.NET X tool. If you don't have the ServiceStack.NET X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install -gx. First, we are going to use the ServiceStack website to generate a new project using the Getting Started page. By navigating to servicestack.net and clicking on Get Started at the top right, you'll be greeted with a project template generator. This enables users to get started quickly by mixing in different technologies into a variety of optimized templates. For this walkthrough, we will start with a blank web template to better illustrate how the file upload feature plugin integrates with other parts of ServiceStack. Providing a name and clicking on the web template, it will download a zip of your newly created templated solution. Once downloaded, unzip the solution into a desired working directory and open with your favorite .NET IDE. In your newly created solution, you will see it split into four projects. This is a standard setup for service stack templates, which consist of your app host project, your service interface project, your service model project, and a tests project. Check out our fundamentals video or docs if you want a detailed explanation of this setup, but the basics are the app host is where we configure our application, the service interface project has our custom service implementations, the service model project has our shared data model, including our request and response data transfer objects or DTOs. And lastly, the tests project contains our unit and integration tests. The main two projects we'll be updating to use the file upload feature plugin is the app host project for configuration and the service model project to declare our database model and auto query DTOs. From a high level, to get all the functionality we want out of the file upload feature plugin, we need to do the following four main steps. Configure a database connection with auto query support, a database model class and auto query request DTO for a create request, configure a virtual files provider, and finally configure our file uploads feature plugin itself. Initially, we will just use a local file system to store our files, but we will also walk through how to set up AWS S3 and Azure Blob Storage as well. 
So far, we only have a blank project, so let's work through the four main steps. First, our application will need a database connection and auto query configured. We can use the serverstack.net x tool to mix in these features quickly. Using a terminal in your project directory, we can run the command xmix space SQLite space auto query to generate a basic configuration for both and pull in the required NuGet dependencies. This command will generate a configure.db.cs and configure.autoquery.cs file. This provides us with a registered SQLite connection and AutoQuery will automatically detect any declared AutoQuery DTOs to generate the required services. Since we will have to store the reference to our uploaded file in our database, we will need a table to store that data in. This brings us to step 2. We will need to declare a table class that stores our file metadata and another table class for our application logic. The second table will be specific to your application and the type of relationship to the table that stores our file metadata will also depend on your use case. So in this example, to keep it simple, we'll make our use case sharing photos. So we have a photo share table and a photo file table. The photo share table has our application specific columns like alt text, category and photographer name, while our photo file table contains only our file metadata and a relationship to photo share. The photo file properties are mapped by convention and you include the properties you want to store. We have file name, which is the name of the file, file path, which is the relative web path location to access the uploaded file, content type, which controls the MIME type of the file, and content length so we know the size of the file without having to retrieve it. Since we are using a code first approach to create our tables, we will also want a primary key called ID and a foreign key property called photo share ID. The auto increment attribute is also needed on the ID property of both tables. In our photo share class, we'll also want to use the reference attribute on a property with the photo file type itself. This will make it easier to upload the file and relate the metadata in a single request. AutoQuery also loads this reference automatically during a query since we have related the photo share ID foreign key in the photo file with the type of photo share and the references attribute. Back in our app host configuration project, we will create these tables on startup. Since we are using an in-memory SQLite connection, the data won't persist between restarts. So while we can now access the tables using ORM Lite, we still don't have a web service for the data in these tables. Auto Query needs a request DTO declared to generate these services for you. We will need a query photo share DTO and a create photo share DTO class. The query photo share needs to inherit from query DB and then pointing to the type of the table that you want to share. This will enable an endpoint so we can query the data in that specified table. Now that we have a way to query data in the photo share table, we'll also need a way to create rows in the same table. AutoQuery can do this with the interface iCreateDB also specifying the database table class. So we need to have a create photo share implementing iCreateDB specifying the photo share class. AutoQuery create requests need to have properties declared to specify what data can be mapped to the related database table class. These properties need to match in name and type, and if we look at our photo share table, in this case, we can copy everything but ID since the ID is auto incremented. So we can now create rows in each table, but AutoQuery does not yet know that the photo file property is for a file upload since it's just a class representing another table. This is where we need to use the upload to attribute, providing a name of the location where we want our files to be stored. Which brings us to the files upload feature plugin itself, which is where we declare the upload location. The files upload feature plugin can take multiple upload location configuration options. Each upload configuration has an associated name and iVirtual Files Provider, which is the interface that is used to manage the file operations. ServiceStack has several built in implementations, including File System, AWS S3, and Azure Blob Storage. 
This is what makes it easy to swap and change the backing storage solution for the files upload feature plugin, as well as the fact as we can have multiple upload locations configured at the same time. So we'll start with a file system virtual provider configured with an upload location and switch to a cloud solution once it's all working and we've stepped through how it all works together. To initialize our file system virtual files provider, we just need to provide a path on our local file system where we want the files to be stored. Here we will use an app data directory within our app host project folder for ease of use. We can use the content root directory and combine with method with our app data folder name. And the assert dir method at the end will ensure that the app data folder is created if it doesn't already exist. Now we have a way to store files, we can integrate the files upload feature plugin and configure it. The files upload feature can have multiple upload locations configured, each with their own rules, paths, validations, etc. Declaring our file upload feature plugin, we will then add an upload location using our file system virtual provider instance and give it the name local to match the name we'll also use with our create photo share request DTO, which is using the upload to attribute. The string local relates the two together, so we know the files uploaded using the create photo share request will use the related file system virtual files provider configured in the upload location that uses the same name local. By default, the files upload feature plugin only allows uploads from registered users in your system. So for this example, we're going to specify the read access role to allow anonymous access and the write access role of the same name to allow anonymous uploads. Running the application, we will be greeted with the standard Hello World UI. Clicking on the View API Details link will show the built-in Hello service in API Explorer. Here on the left, we will also see our two auto query services we created, the query photo share service and the create photo share service. Clicking on create photo share, we will also get the option to view this service in the low code app at the top right. The low code app provides a user friendly web interface for your auto query CRUD services. On the left, we can see our photo share table that AutoQuery has exposed, which at the moment has no rows. However, since we have declared an iCreateDB request DTO in the form of our create photo share class, we have this plus button at the top left of the main panel. Clicking this gives us a generated form to create a row, but we don't yet have a file upload control since LowCode doesn't know what UI control to relate to this complex type. We can add one to low code by using the input attribute with the create photo share DTO and the photo share property, specifying the input type of file. Rerunning our application and navigating to low code, we now have a generated form with a file upload control mapped to our file upload feature. Filling in the form, attaching a file, and clicking submit, we get a row in both tables. Querying the data, we can see the file path value from the related photo file row as well. This pass is the relative path in your application where the file is accessible to download. For example, if we copy the value and use it with our running application, we can view the uploaded image in our browser. Here we can see the path starts with uploads, which is the path the file uploads feature plugin registers and uses to manage the file downloads for you. Even though we are using the built-in low-code and API Explorer interfaces to get this data and files, these are all web services that can be incorporated into your application as you need. By leveraging the low-code app, auto query, and the file uploads feature plugin, we can deliver a functional application to stakeholders to get feedback and improve on the system as we're working on it. For example, let's say requirements change and we need a more robust storage solution for the files that isn't just a local file system. We can switch to use a cloud solution like AWS S3 by either configuring a new upload location or swapping the virtual files provider of the existing one. To use S3 with service stack virtual files, we will need to add the service stack.aws dependency using NuGet. Once installed, we need to instantiate the Amazon S3 client with the appropriate credentials. 
and an S3 virtual files instance using the S3 client and specifying a bucket name. With the S3 virtual files instance, we can directly swap out the file system virtual files instance in the existing upload location that's configured in the file uploads feature. Running our application again and uploading a file, the APIs are exactly the same, but now we look in the configured S3 bucket and we can see the files being uploaded in the expected location. Let's step through how this works. Looking at the source, we can see that path starting with uploads is triggering a download of the file through the files upload feature plugins managed service. Let's go through the workflow of what is happening when a file is uploaded and downloaded using this plugin. Remembering these are just API services that Lowcode is using, so we can reuse them in our custom applications like any other service we create. Here is a diagram of what components are involved when uploading a file. First, let's go over what each component is and what it is responsible for. The virtual files provider controls where our files are stored. It could be an S3 bucket, Azure Blob Storage, file system, or your own implementation of the iVirtual Files interface. The database connection is used to store metadata about the file, like path location, content type, file name, size, etc., in your own database. The file upload feature plugin itself enables the services used to download the files along with related configuration and functionality to facilitate file uploads. And finally, the upload to attribute is applied with our auto query DTO request, which relates the configured upload location with the table or column in your own database. To upload a file, a user creates a request that is sent to our auto query create service, which in our example is the create photo share service. Auto query is providing the implementation for this service and the files upload feature plugin is hooking into the request to handle the file upload functionality. This pre-request hook fires first and looks for a property with the upload to attribute on the request DTO that matches a property on our photo share database model. The name in the upload to attribute is matched on an upload location in our files upload feature, which passes the file stream to the registered iVirtual file implementation, which in this case is AWS S3. The file is uploaded and details of the file are populated in the request DTO to continue to the auto query service of create photo share, who will update our database as normal for auto query CRUD services. As we've seen, the download of the file doesn't call an auto query service you had to declare, but a service the files upload feature plugin registers itself. By default, it starts with the forward slash uploads prefix and the rest of the path matches both the upload location name and the path of the file in your AWS S3 bucket. The file is then streamed from the S3 virtual files implementation to the client, making it fast and efficient. This separation of file storage and metadata access means we can quickly query our tables related to our files for searching, as well as providing an efficient download straight from the remote file storage provider like AWS S3 or Azure Blob Storage. If you have an Azure storage container, switching the files upload feature plugin to use it can be done in just a few steps. Just like with AWS S3, we will need to install the related servicestack.azure NuGet dependency and provide related credentials, in this case, which is the storage container connection string and container name. Once the Azure Blob Virtual Files instance is configured, we can replace the Virtual Files instance provided in the existing upload location. Running it again, and we have files uploading and downloading like before, but this time from Azure. As we can see in this diagram, all we have changed is the implementation for the iVirtual Files instance in the upload location, and we have our files backed by a different cloud provider solution. And each of the multiple upload locations configured can also have controls over the path of the uploaded files, max file size, as well as validation for upload and download requests. This allows for customizations that take into account details from your very own related auto query request DTOs. This is done in the example file blazer application to control the upload path using resolve path, as well as set the max file size and upload and download validation. 
Just like the sample we built from scratch, we can see in this demo application the use of AWS S3, Azure and standard file storage. But this time we are supporting each of these storage methods using multiple upload locations. If we have a look at resolve upload path, we can use the files upload context argument to access the instance of our request ETO when the file is being uploaded. This allows us to have our own business logic about where files are stored and use this information in our validation as well. The sample validate upload also checks to make sure the request ETO is as expected and uses it to enforce rules about the supported file extensions based on our data provided by the client. Validate download checks if the user is an administrator and allows them to download all files, but then provides custom file access control based on the user and the data in the request. The file blazer sample shows how we can limit access based on where the files are stored and who is the user and what files they are requesting. For example, if a file is marked as private, only the user that uploaded the file can download the file. If the file is marked as a team file, the user just must be authenticated and then they can download the file. If the file is marked as public, any anonymous user can download the file. Just like the photo share application we built, FileBlazer stores a file that has a one-to-one -one relationship with another table, but this is not the only way to store related data in your database schema. We can change the reference in our photo share to be a list and Locode will enable support for uploading multiple files at a time. Alternatively, if you don't need to store the additional metadata about the file, you can use a single path property on an existing table to relate to a single file. We do this in the file blazer application as well for app user profile photos. The upload to attribute is applied to our user auth database models profile URL column. The file path is persisted in this column so we can still retrieve the file like with our other examples, except this time we don't need a whole other table for the additional metadata. It's also worth noting here that even though we're using the upload to attribute with auto query services, it will work with any service stack service. Though auto query gives you the generated low code UIs as seen by creating a simple way for users to manage their own profile photo and view other staff photos. Lowcode gives us a great way to build MVPs and prototypes, but at some point you are likely going to need a custom UI for a lot of different use cases. In the file blazer sample, we have created a custom UI for not only viewing files, but for uploading them as well. We do this purely in C Sharp without any JavaScript interop, so we have the best developer experience with our whole server and client being written in the same language. In the file upload razor component, in the fileblazer.client project, we are using the standard input file blazer control from Microsoft and using the onChange event to perform the upload. Looking at the onChange event, we are calling an upload file method that takes the same event as an argument. This uses the multi part form data content type, which is used with the standard HTTP client in .NET. We open the file stream, add it to the content, and call the URL associated with the related auto query create request, passing the content with our file and serialized request DTO. This code also uses the service tag JSON API client, giving us a consistent and simple way of handling responses and checking errors. Again, the full source code for this demo is available on GitHub and the links for it are in the description. So to recap, the Files Upload feature plugin provides the functionality you need for managed file uploads that can be configured to work with multiple storage providers like AWS S3, Azure, and standard file storage. It works with your existing or new database schema with options to store the related file path with your existing table or as a related table with additional metadata. The built-in Service Stack low-code app instantly provides a way for you to use your new file upload service in a generated UI that is easy to use. But like with all things Service Stack, the plugin provides a completely interoperable service for your custom UIs. 
We hope that by having a consistent, easy to use and flexible way to handle file uploads that integrates with your existing applications and popular cloud services means that you can focus on adding value to your users and customers rather than reinventing a commonly demanded feature. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. And if you want to learn more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.